bro. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, my other Instagram was letting me go live for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> what you been up to, though? How you been? Oh, man, I can't complain. I mean, my, my daughter had two soccer games today. One at, uh, mm -hmm. one at 7 a.m. and another one at 11 a.m. And wow. I came home and I cleaned, I cleaned my basement up because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm flying to uh, – California tomorrow to shoot a TV show, so life is nice. Busy. Nice, congratulations! <laughs> what TV show? Uh, it's called a uh, Middle Ground. Okay. Uh, yeah, so supposed to be meeting with some people who got opposite perspectives than me and, and mm -hmm. seeing where we can agree or disagree on. So I'm excited. Uh, they average between like mm -hmm. five and fifteen million views. I ain't never okay. got to be a part of nothing that big in my life, bro. So mm -hmm. I'm about to go, I'm about to go off. <laughs> yeah, go off for that. Yeah, for real though. That's what's up, bro. That's what's man. up. Nice. Yeah. How was the basketball game yesterday? Oh, yeah. My, uh, it was good. I mean, my third grade, that was his first game ever playing organized in his life. He played a great. Uh, he was smiling the whole time. So excited. Nice. Uh, he took four what's shots, up? missed all of them. Mm -hmm. But, bro, he uh, he had a third grade, but mm -hmm. he's this is the first time he's ever got to live with me. So his mom had moved oh. him out of Kansas City mm -hmm. when uh, he was one years old. So. Okay. So he lived in Memphis for like two years, and then he lived in uh, Texas for some years. Mm -hmm. And I got him uh, August. Crazy story, if you don't mind mm -hmm. me going into it. Yeah, go ahead, so, go ahead. So mm -hmm. I didn't. So I didn't get to talk to my kids for a year straight. Damn. Um, and August fifth, something was just on me. Like, man, I know I can reach out to my kids. So mm -hmm. I created a new Apple ID. Mm -hmm. And I shot my son a text message, and that mug said deliver. Mm -hmm. So my my heart went my heart went crazy, bro. And uh, yeah. I sent him a I sent him a picture of me and him. Mm -hmm. And he called me right away and was like, "Daddy." <laughs> uh, and it That's was just great. and it was just lucky, man, that they mm -hmm. mama was at work and they was at yeah. home by themselves. So we got to talk for like four to five hours straight. Okay. And when they mama came home through the door, he hung up real fast, and I was mm -hmm. like, "Damn, dog!" Yeah. So yeah. I shot him. I shot him a text and I said, I love you. And it didn't go deliver. So I was like, damn, man. Damn. And then uh, like five minutes later, I get a phone call from my baby mama. So I was like, damn, dog, what happened? <laughs> and it's my son on the phone. And he said, mama said, we can come live with you if you will come get us. And I said, what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, I just like driving. that. <laughs> right. Hunter, I, all glory to God. She said, I ain't, yeah. I'm not driving there. She said, but if you want them, come get them. Mm -hmm. And uh, my seven-year-old started crying. And I said, don't cry, daddy, it'll be there. And I went to sleep at like 7.30 that day. Mm -hmm. I woke up at 3 a.m. I got there by 11, and I was back in Kansas City by 7. And they in, they in school. They both played soccer. Um, mm -hmm. I coached my second-grade soccer team, actually. I didn't know what I was doing, but it was fun. Uh, <laughs> and, and now they both playing basketball. So, you know, it, it's a cool experience. You know, I, I don't hold no, no bitter feeling towards their mom. You know, she honestly thought, that she was doing what was in the best interest of the kids, and she came to a realization that it was best for them to be with their father. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm just glad to be raising them, and I don't take it for granted at all. That's what's up. Though. That's a great story. That's what's up. <laughs> so that's crazy though. Like damn, yeah, like, like like just like that. <laughs> Man, look here. <laughs> I didn't. That's why. I, that's why I jumped up and got him right away because I didn't want to give her time to cool down or not yeah. be mad or to change yeah. her mind. None mm. of that. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. All right, let me go right now. Hey, yeah. Let me get this out the way. All right, bro. So I just want to get you on to talk about the NBA season so far. Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, first uh, thing. But, I know I was like, go, go ahead. I, was gonna, I, thought, I thought you were going to come in the Lakers. I was like, I don't want to. No, not, not yet. I'm, I'm going to get to them. <laughs> I, my first question is, the, I'm pretty sure you heard about the whole Kyrie Irving situation his stance on the vaccine. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Do you know, yeah. do you know like, the, what the rule is in New York right now? Uh, you know how it works? I, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at it from from two standpoints, because I'm, I'm, I'm logical, right? I, mm -hmm. and, and I'll preface this by saying I support Kyrie Irving 110%. Yeah. Uh, rules are rules, and people are going to make them. You know what I'm saying? Like, the mm -hmm. Holocaust was legal. Slavery was legal. So it ain't about what's right or wrong. Yeah. It's about the legality of things. And a lot of mm -hmm. things have been legal that mm -hmm. a lot of us could agree with are not right. Uh, yeah. Your, your body is your God-given temple. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, mm -hmm. if nothing else, I I can't really – I wouldn't put anything in my body that I didn't feel fully comfortable with, and I wouldn't expect another person to do that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I go back to everything because segregation was because of Jim Crow. You know, everything that we look back on that has segregated the, the people or has kept people apart has mm -hmm. always been government policy. And I mm -hmm. look at this as no different. As mm -hmm. you could say, well, this isn't based on a race or a gender. But it's like, yeah, but it's still causing, causing a divisiveness between people. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing, I, I, you know, I always go back to Marla the King, that we want to be judged by our character, not our color. And yet government keeps finding a way to, to make us divisive, you know, whether it's vaccinated versus unvaccinated, black versus white, gay versus straight, Republican versus Democrat. It's yeah. always something to make us divided to where, like, we're trying to beef with somebody. And I can't get with that. I just, I just see the smoke screen. It's like, damn, it's, it's always something else to make me not like my neighbor. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I get that. I totally get that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I get from the Kyrie Irving situation. I think it's dope that he's uh, taking the stand that he is. Mm -hmm. I feel it's unfortunate that he has a deal with Nike because <laughs> Nike going to do what they did with Muhammad Ali. You know, when Ali was alive, they hated him. And mm -hmm. right now, ain't nobody supporting Kyrie. But mm -hmm. give it 30 years. They're going to mm -hmm. make documentaries about him. Yeah. Nike going to retro all his shoes. Mm -hmm. They're going to have Kyrie Irving T-shirts and Kyrie <laughs> Irving stood for something that he wasn't able to fold. And I just, I just look mm -hmm. at everything from the loan game. And it's like, mm -hmm. man, these companies keep doing the same stuff over and over. It's the, the Jordan, LeBron, Kobe, um, mm -hmm. you know, it always got to be that one athlete that's the rebel. So you got the Muhammad Ali. You know, Kareem was kind of a rebel, but he didn't kind of yeah. – he didn't mm -hmm. fell into line a little bit now that he's older. Uh, yeah. Mac Moore, uh Abdul Rahim, early basketball player who now played in the big three, you know, yeah. when he was a Muslim. So, mm -hmm. man, it's all about your stature. And Mac Moore, he wasn't big enough name. To mm -hmm. where he could have caused a scene, you know, he was a, a little player. Says, so like, get him out the league real quick and shut him up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kyrie like, um, is. What was the dude's name? Um, was it B.J. Armstrong? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think because Kyrie got some stature, is why it's such a big thing. Um, I just see companies like ESPN and Nike being able to profit off of it twenty years from now and still be divisive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally see what you mean. Yeah, because from my perspective, when it's like. I get what Kyrie's trying to do, and they're trying to demonize him for it, but he is standing up for the right cause, like, because, like, a lot of people are losing their job just because they're unvaccinated, and so I understand where he's coming from, but he did say he's not anti-vax, so. Yeah, and that's the so, thing, I'm not, I'm not anti it either, like, I, whatever an uh, individual wants to do, but, I mean... You know, America is America for a reason. Like, we have the freedoms that we have here. And the more you give those freedoms away, you don't get them back. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we don't look at anything from, from a big scale. You can say, well, this is small. This is small. Yeah, but everything is a domino effect, right? Yeah. I think we, we all mm -hmm. would agree in life. All it takes is one step and one step and one step. And the more you give your power and your privileges away, your kids never know they existed. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm saying. And I just – there's too much – skepticism around the vaccine. I think we all could agree with that. Definitely. You know, it's real hit, it's real hit and miss. You'd have heard a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I look at it from the perspective, if this was really about health, you know, we'd be pushing, you know, eat healthier food, you know, drinking more water, taking vitamins. Mm -hmm. vitamins. We, we aren't pushing anything of getting healthy. So that's why it's hard to believe that it's about getting health and not about money. Because yeah, the shot is free, but somebody is making money somewhere, somehow. Exactly. And, and that's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. Because somewhere out there, like, the doctors are making the money and everything. <laughs> Nothing's free in life. Nothing's yeah. free in life. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you ain't seeing, Brent, you know, the, the cure, you know, cures for breast cancer for free, or cures for AIDS for free, or cures for herpes for free. None of that. Mm -hmm. It's solely just COVID. And I'm saying, if we're making people healthy, Brody, I know a bunch of people that got diabetes and all this other stuff. Let's exactly. Get them right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, so it's it's just really crazy what's going on with everything. Like, and then it's it's weird because it's like they're saying like, oh, like the players who can, the visiting players who are unvaccinated can play. So it's like Bradley Bill played and everything, and I'm like, so like, what's what's the difference at this point? Like, I understand New York has these rules and everything, but like, should Bradley Bill not be able to play in the Garden if that's the case? Yeah, I'm about a power play. You got to make an example out of somebody. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, I think it's cool that Kyrie has the heart to to stand up. That's the, that's the one th knock I've always had about LeBron is like LeBron is so talented, mm -hmm. uh, but he he folds in a lot of big moments. And yeah. whether it's you know his education on political stances or you know wanting to pass at the last minute, 
he's a he's a leader to a lot of young people who don't have a father, and he guides mm-hmm. a lot of kids down the wrong path. I don't think he consciously does it, mm-hmm. but I really think Kyrie Irving is is making a lot of people look at life differently because mm-hmm. everybody is pushing that you got to get the shot, you got to get the shot, and. You know, like I know, man, you ain't got to push me to be healthy, dog. Like, if it's something I need, I'm going to do it. Like, you ain't got to make me drink water. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just little things you don't have to tell me to do. You don't have to tell me to work out. I I get the benefits of it. But Mm -hmm. if you got to force me to do something, then I should be able to question you, well, why? Exactly. And and if I can't question you, then something ain't right. And anytime you ask somebody a question, you know, they always say, like, follow the science, follow the science. And if you can still get it, you can still pass away from it. You can still spread it. Then why am I putting this in my body? Why wouldn't I just take a vitamin, eat healthy, mm-hmm. you know, sit in, the, sit in the sauna for 10 minutes so I can sweat out mm-hmm. all my toxins? Like, why wouldn't mm-hmm. I go that route versus mm-hmm. taking some experimental medicine? So, hey, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. I mean, yeah. hopefully, like, the, they change the rules somehow and start pushing like the, for people just to be more healthy and just be like, all right, well, you don't need to take the shot. And maybe you could, like, you have a COVID test before every game, because that's what they was, they was doing in the bubble. Like, they just had a COVID shot before every game, before every practice. So, I don't know why they don't go that route. But. Yeah, I, I think it's solely just to make an example out of him, man. You got to have that one person who – you got to have a story. Like, imagine if everybody fell in line. And I'm not knocking it, but Bradley Beal ain't a big enough name. Yeah. Jonathan, Jonathan Isaac ain't a big enough name. You know what I mean? So, there's players out there, but Kyrie Irving is like – Bingo. He's the one, and, yeah. Yeah, and you know how ESPN and the media, they love to beat up on a black athlete to try to stand tall. Like, because exactly. Aaron Rodgers could be getting the same heat that Kyrie Irving hit. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I am sure some white players in the NBA that's not vaccinated. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I just pay attention to how the media loves to target the black athlete. Mm-hmm. Consciously or consciously, you know, I just think it's an easier sell because you know how we are as kids. We crack jokes on each other. We talk mm-hmm. about each other's mamas our whole life. So when somebody is the star, we already envious of him because he's more athletic than us anyway. We know it's like growing up in the hood. So mm-hmm. he on TV. So we all like, yeah, he should have made that free throw. Yeah, he's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> we we resonate with that more because we with it, we like that our whole life versus little white kids when they beef with each other. Like, it's okay, Tom. You can be better next time. Yeah. You know, they mm-hmm. grow up nicer to each other. We we talk stuff to each other our whole life. Mm-hmm. So when we watch somebody publicly get dog. Mm-hmm. We don't even step back. Like, damn, bro, he got a family. His kids is watching this. Damn, that isn't even true. We don't even try to put the, the human on it because mm-hmm. we jealous of where they are in life anyway. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah, like I think I think Kyrie said something about that too. Like how we try to, you know, just make it seem like well a lot of athletes said it. We just try to make them just as athletes and not as human beings. Because mm-hmm. that's what they are first and foremost. Like they're humans. We gotta treat them as that. Not yeah. just treating them as like, you know, some something like some entertainment that we just watching. Yeah, yeah, we we really look at sports and we don't we don't understand it. That's not real. <laughs> like that's yeah. a job they do. The same way you go to your job on a daily basis, they just happen mm-hmm. to be good enough to play sports. They still have anxiety. They still have depression. They still be thinking about, damn, I gotta pay my light bill. What my cell phone mm-hmm. do? Exactly. My baby mama, and when my baby mom mad at me, like they they regular people. They still they stomach still hurt sometimes because they eat bad mm-hmm. food. Mm-hmm. But we put them on God like figures, and you know the Bible says, you know, you should ever idolize another human. Mm-hmm. And we have that really bad to so anybody who is on TV. That's mm-hmm. our God. You know, we don't believe in We won't read the Bible. We, we say it's white Jesus. And I ain't saying you ain't got to be Jesus. You can be spiritual. You can, mm-hmm. be, you can believe yeah. in the African religion. You can believe in Islam. You know, why we got to go to white every time we talk about God? That's but, true. Mm-hmm. But we, we got to look up to, well, Kanye said it. Well, LeBron said it. Well, the NBA players said it. It's like, well, what do you say in your heart? Because mm-hmm. you know yourself better than all these people. Like, what is your to, thinking? Yeah, listen to that voice inside of you. That that's God in my mind. That voice, the intuition. You know you shouldn't be doing that, and you do it anyway. Mm-hmm. That's going against God because your brain is like, "Damn it, I knew it." <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly, exactly. So the next question I want to ask you: You know about the um the foul change, like the real change with the fouls? I don't, but I seen uh, I seen I was watching on House of Highlights that it said James Harden wasn't getting the same calls that he was getting. So I, I did yeah. want to look into it and figure out what the difference was. I, mm-hmm. I I've always hated that. Yeah, uh, but I, I see you know but, players who jump into like when they shoot and they jump into the player or like you know how James Harden is like he would kind of like try to grab you and try to yeah. draw a foul like stuff like that. And Trey Young be like throwing his body into people, so they changed that. His off though, huh? KD still getting his off his swipe, you know, he swipe and catch you on the goal. Yeah, up. I mean, I mean, with KD, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like they're nitpicking at some of the players, 
Yeah. Like like Trey Young, Devin Booker, yeah, Damian Lillard, James Harden. Like those are players I really seem like I right, they draw a lot of fouls, but they like really like smart of how they used to do it. Yeah. They used to like, you know, try to do little things like jump into people or kick a leg out. So now they changed that. Yeah. James so now, Harden though, he kinda not he not as slick as the Trey Young's because now that yeah. now that you can slow the film down. You can see when he goes to the legs, he, he hooked the arm on the exactly. low. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't know he was doing it at first, so I was confused mm-hmm. with because he do it so fast, and he dribbled through legs like 45 times. Exactly. So, <laughs> so, so he'll like, put you to sleep. He'll be dribbling, and then like when he goes to the basket, and then be reaching, he'll just like wrap his arm around you, yeah. and then he would just try to shoot at the same time. Yeah. That's so just, That's very strategic, though. You know, that's like – that takes yeah. a lot of talent. You know, anybody who's played basketball would totally agree that when you drive into the basket – your, mm-hmm. your first mind is on making the bucket. Your mm-hmm. second is on possibly if there's contact. Your mm-hmm. third is if there is somebody stepping up to drop the pass off. So the mm-hmm. fact that James Harden can, can look at all of that and be like, mm-hmm. oh, his arm is out. Let me grab it real quick. That's like That's super right high too. basketball. Yeah. That's, crazy. That's crazy high level because the average person would try to avoid that contact or move mm-hmm. away from it, not embrace it, and get the bucket. So I respect that he's smart enough to do that. Yeah. I always say, yo, James Harden to me, he like – he mastered basketball, like yeah. Like, all the fouls he be drawing, like that. Like you, like you said, you watch it slow down. Like, how did he do that? Like, like how do you even get the shot off and like still get the like still get the end one? Like, it's to me, it's just mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, he initiates his fouls. I guess that's the best way to put it. Like, yeah. you could be playing a perfect D on him, and he can grab you and make you foul him. And you'd be like, what? <laughs> like, how you doing anything? <laughs> yeah. So like, that's dope, that, though. That is though. So like, they basically. Now it's either like a no call or an offensive foul. Oh, that's a yeah. foul. That really mm-hmm. changed the game up then. That really mm-hmm. – because, uh, you know, that's that's easy, you know, to get an uh, and one or something like that. So, the fact that it'd be a turnover, no bucket, and other team's possession, and a foul yeah. on you, mm-hmm. that's crucial. Yeah. yeah I, have, I haven't got to watch uh, much much Brooklyn games this year. I watched recently when they played the Pistons. They still they still look pretty good, though. They get up and down yeah. the court. I don't mm-hmm. think they will – they're going to – the Kyrie effect is going to hurt them. Into mm-hmm. the playoffs, possibly, but I want to say is that is that Patty Mills they picked up? They got Patty is Mills, that, yeah. Yeah, man, he, I I like him a lot more than I like the um their backup last year. So Patty can get up and down the court with speed. Yeah, I did like Mike James a lot. Mike James a gunner, Mike James bro. Is good. Yeah, he can hoop, but he a gunner. Yeah, so yeah. he he don't fit the backup role of a Kyrie. You know, because yeah. I mean, in Russia, Mike James is Kyrie. You know yes, basically, basically. <laughs> he, he go for 40, 50, He do whatever he wants. So mm-hmm. I just think that he took a lot of he took a lot of shots. This mm-hmm. should have been KD shots in the playoff. Exactly. That but is true, if, though. <laughs> if Kyrie don't get hurt, I, I 100% still think the, the Nets go to the finals and possibly win it all. D- think so? I do. I definitely think they beat the Bucks. Be- I know they beat the, Lakers, the Bucks. Though. I know they beat the Bucks for sure. Um, mm-hmm. The Lakers didn't even get there because the Sun. it was the Sun. I'm talking about, last I'm talking about year. this year, though. But this, uh, year, this year, I don't have no faith in the Lakers, dog. <laughs> I, they, I, I honestly think uh, Shea Gilders Alexander is a huge upgrade from Russell Westbrook for OKC. I mean, yeah. you seen that shot he hit the other day from the logo? Yo, yeah. That, I, hey, that was the most disrespectful thing to Russell Westbrook in life. <laughs> that, was, that was so disrespectful in, Yo, in L.A. Was from the logo. Oh, my mm. gosh. Mm. But I just – the OKC Lakers don't have nice. it. Yeah, like, the Lakers don't have it. I mean, that, that team is too old. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you see the way the Suns was able to kind of dominate the playoffs last year, mm-hmm. um, and every other team has, has gotten better. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I mean, just the lineup, if you look down the stretch, like, yeah, Melo's hitting those clutch threes, but you either got to have Russ on the bench. Because at some point, LeBron has to dominate the ball. Yeah. So what do you do? Le- uh, LeBron, Melo, Malik Monk. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just, yeah. I just, I just can't see – I see a good lineup for the regular season. Mm-hmm. But as far as a seven-game stretch, mm-hmm. uh, as old as that team is, yeah, I, I see like a player like a Chris Paul being able to take his young sons and run them crazy. Yeah, and I, I don't see the guy. Um, they were, they were trying to get Buddy Hill. I was like, yeah, that would probably been a better fit because he can shoot. Yeah, <laughs> so that would have been a way better fit than Melo. A lot, a lot, and I like Carmelo because they friends and all. But mm-hmm. Buddy's a, a younger, he's a better defender and can get it up and down the floor better. I see yeah. Mike James had a. Had a tryout for them too, and they didn't pick him up. I think Mike James mm. would have been a, a good guard. That would have been a good guard for um, them too. Just because he takes mm. a lot of shots. So, no, he don't start. But, mm-hmm. I mean, you got, let's say if you got Russ Booker, Rondo, you know, Rondo isn't a, I mean, Rondo isn't a scorer. Westbrook mm-hmm. isn't a scorer anymore. I mean, he can get some dunks. Yeah. But Mike James, if you put Mike James in with your second unit, 
Mm-hmm. He can get you some buckets. Uh, yeah, I, I had heard a rumor that Isaiah Thomas had had a tryout with them too, but I didn't see. I haven't seen him. I back think in it was. Yet. Um, he had a tryout with. I think Golden State. I think it was actually. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know, did they pick him up or no? No, they didn't pick him up. They picked up um, Gary Payton the second. Wow, really? Yeah, he's been battling for them. Yeah, I, I seen him yesterday. Uh, he looked really. Uh, he looked really impressive. Uh, yeah. They beat New Orleans. I'm Golden State. Look like they 2015-16 team, don't they? Yo. Boy? That's my dark horse picked up in the championship. You think so? I think so. They get if Clay comes back about like seventy percent, and then Wiseman comes back, I think they can win it all. Clay looks good. I, I've seen some videos of him shooting. He looks yeah. Because really mm-hmm. I think like, he's what? a shooter. He's like he's not going to like really like fall off because like yeah. it's just his lateral quickness because like, his defense and everything. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you think Wiseman is ready to step into that that defensive player like on that caliber. I mean, DeAndre, I think DeAndre Ayton would couldn't handle it in the finals. I think it was a little uh, little starstruck. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, he got Draymond beside him, so Draymond can really help him. You're right. So that's the thing. Draymond can really coach him up, tell him where to be and things like that. So maybe, but we yeah. we have to see how he plays this season. They say he gained some weight and everything, muscle. So. We'll see. You'll see. I, man, my, uh, my, I would like, and I know this ain't no chance of possible, man, I would like LaMelo to get a run all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals or something real fast. You never know. Kids, like, <laughs> see what the Hawks did last year? Yeah. So I'm a big fan of guards, man. I, 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 mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of that. You know, LaVar already said the youngest was going to be the best one. And he did man, say it. He did say He was right, though. <laughs> he didn't miss it all because that little dude is nice. Exactly. He was definitely right about it. Yeah, Lonzo look good, real good with Chicago too as well. Though. Chicago is, yeah. is playing a lot better. I thought they would play good with with Lonzo and um, Alex Caruso. Mm-hmm. Zach, Le- I've, I've been always been a big Zach Levine fan. I've never really cared for Demar Derozan's game. I just I don't mm-hmm. think it fit the NBA. He's a good player. Don't get me wrong, he can hoop, yeah. but his game is like early two thousand two thousand five. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm saying? Yeah, like Rip Hamilton type stuff. And like, mm-hmm. they and he don't even run around like Rip. You get him Rip with yeah, mid range and everything. Yeah, because Demar mm-hmm. is a dummy mid range player. That just yeah. that don't win you games, and that's why you know Toronto eventually had to let him go. Is because yeah, you can get us twenty, but he didn't put up forty five because he's shooting from three. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I mean, I think I think Chicago can go second round, maybe. Yeah, the, the East is so. definitely open. Yeah, but then again, I don't know because I. I it's kind of hard to put anything past Giannis. Like, I'm not a huge Giannis fan by any means, mm-hmm. but uh, I definitely look at the Lakers and they built their whole team just to be Giannis. Like mm-hmm. the whole NBA is trying yeah. to beat him. Yeah, and I just think, man, if they could have kept like Malcolm Brogdon or something like that, they would really be nice, dog. I mean, yo, I was used to say that for years. Like they should have kept Brogdon. Like, yeah. I mean, they got Holiday, so probably yeah. good. But I feel like if they would have like somehow being to kept Brogdon through all this, like. They've been like really good. Like they wouldn't have to get hauled if they had Brown. Yeah, I just like this game a lot, and he fit in really good with them. I think he got hurt with them or something like that before they let him go. But mm-hmm. he fit in really good with Giannis and Chris Middleton a lot. Yeah, um, Chris did. Middleton is another player, man. I think is dummy code. Like I had somebody mm-hmm. get upset at me because I said uh, I think Chris Middleton is a better player than Giannis. But and mm-hmm. I don't mean like overall player, but I mean like yeah. you can throw Chris Middleton the ball on the wing and he can mm-hmm. get a bunch of any yeah. yeah, any kind of way, whether it's getting to the basket or turning my back to you or a step back, or mm-hmm. I can hit a crossover and throw a dime. You don't mm-hmm. get to, you know what Giannis is gonna do. You know he gotta bully you to the basket, or mm-hmm. you know he's gonna shoot a three, which you don't have the most confidence in. And mm-hmm. so from a pure basketball perspective, mm-hmm. eighty two games, Chris Middleton is better. Yeah. Playoffs, Giannis is better. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. of how, how basketball works. I mean, that makes sense. I get exactly what you mean. Because, yeah, I, I, mean, I used to always say this about Giannis. I'm like, you know what he's going to give you. You know he's going to, you know, try to drive, dunk with you, go one on five all the time. For me, my whole thing with Giannis was like, all right, you got to develop like a back to the basket game, like a little mid range, like jump hooks and everything. You can't just always try to dunk everything. Yeah. Like, you got you to gotta mix it up sometimes. And yeah. I, I felt like he figured it out during the playoffs a bit. Like he started doing more things, and I'm like, okay, like he's starting to get it. Yeah, but I never he, agreed that Giannis should develop a three, but man, I yeah. always thought like, you know how Melo's post game is? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah like that. Mm-hmm. That'll exactly. really make him because he's so tall. Yeah. That mm-hmm. ain't nothing you could do on a turnaround. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean that'll that'll really separate him. God, yeah. Or if he can fade, if he can fade away with it a little bit too. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like he's so tall, his arms are so long. It's like, all right, you just turn around, shoot over them. Easy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So my next question: uh, Did you hear about the the Celtics with Marcus Smart? No, I did, I did not. 
Ooh, so basically they you know the boss have been struggling a bit. So then Marcus Smart came out and said, Oh yeah, those guys they need to like pass more. Oh yeah, talking about uh Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was like, Oh, you like we talked to them about it, but like they have to, you know, make like look to facilitate more. Like, they're looking to score, 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 and everybody's thinking they know when they're gonna look to score. So how do you feel about that? A lot of, a lot of uh-huh. people saying like it should have been kept in the locker room. But Marcus Smart said to himself, We told them already, like this is what I have to do. Man, Mark my I'm Marcus Smart is crazy that he's still in the league, you know, because even at Oklahoma State, he was okay, but mm-hmm. he never he never lived up to what you thought he was going to be like. When he was a McDonald's All-American, it looked like he could hoop. Yeah. And then at Oklahoma State, it was like, oh, maybe the coach just ain't really giving him enough freedom. Mm-hmm. And in the NBA, he really ain't got off, but he's still around. But mm-hmm. I look at uh, them Celtics boys, and that's what happened. Bro, they went from Isaiah Thomas to Kyrie Irving. You get what I'm to, saying? To Kevin yeah. Walker. Yeah, it ain't like they was around a Rondo who they got to sit back like, no, hit him. He facilitate the ball. He passed. You know, I mean, they coach is Brad Stevens, who isn't going to speak up anyway. He's soft spoken as it is. Yeah. So, you know, if they had like a Chauncey Billups as a coach or just, mm-hmm. you know, as an assistant coach or a Steve Nash. But like mm-hmm. you said, bro, they had uh, Isaiah, Kyrie, and Kimba. All they know is ball hogging. Like, you know, you got to watch that in practice year mm-hmm. after year after year. And, you know, I mean, for me anyway, like, you know, I don't know if you hoop. But when mm-hmm. they, when you ain't the star player, you got a facility. I know what it's like to have to damn, bro. Let me. That's the that's the homie. Let me give him the ball, and I know what it's yeah. like to be on a team where it's like, oh, it's my time now. I can yeah. shoot this hole. I can shoot this hole fifty times. I want to. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's that's how Jalen Brent. That's how they feel now. Like it ain't. It is their team. You know, Jason Tatum. They got his man body a little bit. He got a little mm-hmm. muscle on him now. Mm-hmm. All star game, Gatorade commercials. Yeah, you know. So you know, <laughs> you can't, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which which mm-hmm. it comes natural. He didn't, he's got his big contract, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, mm-hmm. you you get to flex a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm-hmm. that do that lose you games? Yes. But that's that's the balance of learning how to be the star and be the team player. And that's mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine doing that in the NBA. You know, on on a serious level of because y'all all men, so I shouldn't really have to lead y'all. We should just go hoop. Yeah, you know, and we know all should be. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that I gotta be a leader, mm-hmm. but just give me the ball. You making eighty million? I ain't gotta tell you what to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know what's going on with them, but maybe they need to bring in a new point guard. But they do have a new coach in um, Ime Udoka. Yeah, so and man, I'm, and that's the thing when you was st- you was already you was a, a ascending star, and you got a new coach. You in mm-hmm. you in charge. Mm-hmm. Cause you got, you can go to the GM, you can go to the president, you got all that, you got that leverage. Mm-hmm. And so okay. it just those, those power plays happen. Um, and the Celtics, man, I always knew they they run with short lived. You know, mm-hmm. I think their biggest mistake was not letting go of Jason Tatum for Anthony Davis. Because mm. it was Jason Brown. Uh, one of them. It was one. But of them, either, yeah. either way, Kyrie Irving is potentially still there. Mm-hmm. You got Anthony Davis. I mean, mm-hmm. the East is wide open. Mm-hmm. Your whole roster could be different, you know. You still got Jason Tatum and your know, or Jalen Brown, so mm-hmm. I think they shot themselves in the foot, um, not wanting mm-hmm. to let them players go because you wasn't able. To, I don't think they saw foresaw Car- Kyrie leaving. You know yeah, what they mean? didn't at all. They sure. didn't at all. I mean, they hurt. The, they hurt themselves a lot. I didn't think Kyrie was leaving either until that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking, like, yo, he probably going to be here for a good while, you know. Like, he seemed like he was really, like, felt like he was at home with them. But then that last season, he like, they had those moments where, you know, like, it seemed like they was, like, kind of not beefing, but, like, just yeah. struggling to figure out, like, who's the guy and all that. Like, who, who's the person who's going to be, like, the go-to guy? Who's the leader of this team? And then Kyrie's in the leaving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the coolest part about Kyrie is, like, he doesn't try to pretend. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, well, he didn't want to be in Cleveland no more. It was like, I just don't want to. You know, he, yeah. he didn't make it about LeBron. He just said, I don't want to be here. And when he left the Celtics, he didn't make it about anybody. Um, mm-hmm. Even with the vaccination stance, he's not, he, like he said, he's not pro-vax, not, not anti-vax. You know, he mm-hmm. always is very well at articulating his feelings. Now, how other people want to manipulate them or translate them or how Stephen A. Smith, or like Skip Bayless and Shannon yeah. Sharp, you know, mm-hmm. that's their personal prerogative and opinion. Mm-hmm. But Kyrie always does a really good, um, a really good time with making – Sure, he lets you know this is me, this is mm-hmm. who I am, this is how I feel, and mm-hmm. and that's it. And that that pisses a lot of people in the media off because you want to be able to have something to poke at, and it's it's not really anything to poke at him outside of he just does what he wants to. Yeah, <laughs> basically, basically, yeah. like, I mean, my only grievance with Kyrie is like, like, 
Like, don't be taking those games off and everything. Like, remember last year when he, like, took those games off? Yeah, but hold on. Yeah. Oh, well, like I just said, listen, like mm-hmm. I told you that, that the Celtics boys was lazy because of they came on the point guards. Yeah. K- Kyrie was work. He was work. Him and Deion Waiters was doing their thing in Cleveland. And who show up? That's true. Yeah. Who, who, who randomly take off two weeks to go to Miami and chill? You see what I'm That's saying? That's true. I forgot <laughs> so, I forgot so you So that. you watch from the people around you like, oh, damn, we can do this. Oh, we got this much power. And then mm-hmm. you got to realize he hit, that, he hit that step back. Game seven. Yep. So was it game seven or game six when he hit that shot over uh, Steph? In the um, game final. seven. You're right. Game so mm-hmm. I hit that shot. I could, mm-hmm. I could take a I could game off if I want to. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's all a domino effect. Yeah. But that it, you didn't get that in the Jordan era. You didn't get mm-hmm. that in the Kobe era. You got that from the sure. LeBron era. So mm-hmm. all I'm saying is all this laziness, all these people want to take off and not put in maximum yeah. effort and a low management. LeBron mm-hmm. James started that. Yeah. Yeah, LeBron definitely just started though. Like he, and, like a lot of players are just taking it to new heights now. But LeBron, <laughs> yeah, he, he did start it though. Like Kawhi, like I don't know what Kawhi be doing. Like, like we said, the domino effect. Though. All it takes is one step, and it's like, oh, we in this. Kawhi is like, oh, you can take games off. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> before they used to find the players for it, but now it's like they just letting it, let it happen. Like yeah, like I remember before it was say load management. Now it's just saying rest. Yeah, so like. So like, and it was like a pride thing back in the day. You know, bro, players used to pride themselves on playing every game and not missing a game. I think what did Carl Malone play like, you know, 500 games straight or something like yeah, that without missing like one that. or something? Yeah. yeah it just, we in a different era. And like I say, I don't knock LeBron, but when he forced, when he did that whole decision, I can leave. Mm-hmm. It was some 16 year old kid, like, oh, damn, wait till it's my turn. <laughs> yep. Mm hmm. Gave policy to the players, basically. Yeah. And so I don't knock it, but you know, when you give power away, you never get it back, and players can do what they want. So a player – I mean, that's why, you know, college players are getting played now. High school players can sign – I mean, Mikey Williams, high school kids. He signed a contract. And, endorsement mm-hmm. deals out the food. Once you open that door, mm-hmm. it, it seems good until – man, let Mikey Williams get to the NBA and be really good, and he in a terrible deal. Mm-hmm. Or let him flop and tear his ACL in his next – in senior year. Like, there's just so many things that go with, with trying to rush the process and not want the, the slow and steady part. Mm-hmm. And – I don't know. I, I like the way a, a Kobe Bryant handled it. I know he tried to force a trade a few times, mm-hmm. but I like the way he was able to stay with that one organization. He got paid his big money. They they looked for him. At, they looked out for him at the end and gave him what what thirty million a year, or something crazy. Even yeah. though he was he was going down. Mm-hmm. I, I like for players to to do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I think with LeBron, how he's forced his hand, he's made organizations re strategize the way they're going to look at players mm-hmm. and. It's going to hurt the players in the long run because you know and I know, man, for some reason, the owners have always been able to outsmart the players. Yeah. So, <laughs> so right now it looks cool that college players can get paid and high school people can sign deals. But, man, give it 25 years and watch everybody complain about this because they still getting taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. Which in some way or form they probably are, but mm-hmm. because you was in such a rush to get your end, you mm-hmm. didn't read the fine print. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of players, like, I mean, they probably know what's in the contract, but like – a lot of them are young, so they're not going to understand yeah. what it is. Like, that's why they should probably have, like, a lawyer with them. Yeah. And, like, you know, <clears throat> people who actually understand the terms and the conditions right. of the contract. And you got to think, man, that, that lawyer probably getting paid off the top, too. So why that lawyer going to tell you the real mm-hmm. truth? If exactly. your family from the hood, I'm everybody's taking advantage of you. And I'm just – the more I learn about life with the more wisdom and the older I get, and I'm still mm-hmm. learning every day, mm-hmm. I'm just real skeptical of big companies or anybody large throwing – huge amounts of monies at young people because you locked them mm-hmm. up for a long time. Yeah. Um, and every music artist has always complained about their contract at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like whatever is happening in the music world is slowly just seeping out into the real world. It's where, mm-hmm. oh, man, you got some talent on your own. You 14, you got a podcast. Let me throw you this bread and yeah. I have locked you up. I, I feel like that's what's happening and we don't really see it because you don't need anybody to – take over your talent if you believe in yourself at such a young age because you're still developing your craft. Mm-hmm. Like, at, at 15, we all in rough draft mode. Yeah. But, man, if somebody would have gave me $100 million for my talent at 15, I don't know if I push as hard to get where I am today. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I kind of mm-hmm. get complacent. I may get a little lazy. So mm-hmm. I, I'm just always skeptical of that. I mean, remember uh, Liam Bias? Yeah. yeah. The guy who – yeah. So mm-hmm. and he didn't even get a lot of money, though. He just got drafted, went to a party, and OD'd. Mm-hmm. Well, what you think 18 year olds is about to do when they got 100 mil? You know what I'm saying? You exactly. just, you're creating a, a dangerous environment that mm-hmm. we already see how much players get in trouble now. Mm-hmm. Go high, yeah. give high school kids a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. 
hopefully they could like figure out something. I mean, well, I'll say this about that. The high school players today are more accessible to the older group of players. So they, because they always around each other, they they work out together, things like that. So hopefully, like the older players can, you know, help the younger players that are listening. This is what you need to do with your money. This is what you need well, to like, you know, focus and everything. The older players did not yeah. help PJ Washington. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I have no idea how that happened. Like your teammates are supposed to let you know what was going on with that. Like she called him at Kentucky, bro. He was too young. You can't. He got. That's you, true. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Hey, that, hey, any college basketball player, they take that same L. You, I can't. Yeah. You can't disagree. Anybody, you eighteen, so you coming from mm -hmm. high school kids to to mm -hmm. you just it's case closed. It, it was coach John Calipari was the only person who could have helped him out. You know what I'm saying? The or the yeah. coach Oregon is that AJ, but you know what I know, man. Mm -hmm. When you go on college campuses, you can hoop, bro. This. Yeah, and so it, it ain't like he was limited from a, a girl or he couldn't get some women because when you hoop and you're in a college campus, once again, you got an abundance of women. Yeah. But Brittany was 10 times better than every girl in that college campus. You get what I'm saying? And she's a so, celebrity at that. Right. right. So, like, yeah. yeah. So, man, it makes sense why he was so starstruck over her. And she, man, she probably was doing stuff this man didn't even know existed in life, dog. Not sure. So, <laughs> so yeah, it just, it, it comes with the territory or you live and you learn. But I don't, a lot of those older athletes, they ain't been looking out for the young. I mean, it almost, uh, didn't LaMelo get caught up? I don't know if that was true or not, but I've seen a story he, about him as well. He was dating, he was dating some, some porn star or something like that, or like yeah. some woman, but I, I, I haven't heard anything about it. Right. Yeah, so, so the OGs obviously ain't looking out that much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe LeVar told him, though. LeVar told him, like, you're not going to meet any good women when you get to a certain point. Like, yeah. So maybe after all that happened, LeVar told him, like, yo, listen, you, Oh, his brother, like, Lonzo. What, what the go have fun, like, yeah. Yeah, like, like, go have – do what you got to do, have fun, but don't get caught up, like. Yeah, Lonzo already got caught up. Well, Lonzo got his high school chick pregnant, but I think she get, like, 20K a month in child support. She some, something. Some fat, yeah, she some, some something. crazy fat. Yeah, because I, I, I remember that situation. I think LeVar said something about it, too. He was just like, she's going to get you. You got to watch out. Yeah, I personally think LeVar Ball should get a lot more credit, man. He's one of the greatest black fathers we've had in a long time. I mean, to get three boys to the NBA, that's not – we know we see what our homicide rate is. We see how many kids go to jail. That should just really highlight how important it is to have a daddy and what happens when kids have fathers. He got three – not three kids to the NBA, bro? Exactly. Like, like come on. That, that's next level. Like, damn, look what mm -hmm. happened to – look at all these kids that grow up without daddies and look mm -hmm. at what happened when you put a man in the house. There's mm -hmm. no way to argue it. So, I just – I really think the way he gets hated on is because mm -hmm. we don't want to give that man his credit for hey, – he a dope daddy. Yes, for real though. Like I always give him all his credit. I'm like, listen, he's a prophet. He's a good father. He cares about his kids. He believes in his kids. He put his kids in positions to be successful, and that's that's all you can ask yeah. for. Yeah, it's just that they're not used to somebody being like that. Like they're not used right. to a black father really trying to elevate their kids. Like they always <laughs> the stereotype, you know, like yeah, the father is deadbeat or whatever, you know. Yeah, so the, I say, man. If you think LeVar Ball hype his kids up, you ain't heard me talking to my kids. Hey, I tell Because the world is going to kill your confidence anyway, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I might as well gas you up as high as I possibly can and then go out in the world. You will find out if you suck. You will see mm -hmm. where you need to get better. Mm -hmm. Somebody will criticize you, and mm -hmm. that should be life. But, man, you know and I know the worst thing that happens is to grow up in a house with no self-esteem and then mm -hmm. to step out into the world because everything is looking to take advantage of you anyway. Not sure. You short, you ugly, you tall, you fat, you black, you white. You know, mm -hmm. everything is trying to already associate you. So if you don't have somebody reinforcing that confidence to let you know you are great no matter what, mm -hmm. you're going to always be looking for external validation. And the world is going to give you something to validate, all right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> for sure. So the final question I want to ask you, the predictions. Like, who's, gonna, who's going to the finals? Who's going to win it? Who's the MVP? All that stuff. <laughs> Uh man, uh, if I had to uh, out the East, realistically, I don't. I see the Bucks probably could repeat. Um, okay. I know Chicago is really high in the standings right now. New York is up mm -hmm. there as well, but yeah, I like Julius Randle. I can't put a lot of faith in them. You know, yeah. I just I, I can't. Mm -hmm. it, even with Brooklyn, I like um, Kevin Durant a lot. I would have to. James Harden has never been consistent in the playoffs. I know last year his hamstring was damaged, so that played a role in it. Mm -hmm. um, but missing Kyrie Irving, that's that's a, a huge. Deficit because Kyrie mm -hmm. going out is why they lost to the Bucks last year. Yep. The Hawks are good, but I don't see the Hawks making a finals run. So I'm going with the Bucks mm -hmm. out the East. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the West, the West is wide open. If I had my choice, and I like Denver, I really, really mm. love the, the talent of Denver mm-hmm. and how deep they are. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't put no faith in Utah, bro. They Utah do the same thing every I never year. Put faith in Utah. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> they, never put faith in Utah. They just a great regular season team. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like they had the best record last year. I'm just like, but yep. regular season, like whatever. Like they're going to knock. I think they got knocked out with first round, second round. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think a team. I don't. I like Donovan Mitchell, but I don't think he could be the best player on the team. And that's not a knock on his game at mm. all. I just don't think he could be the. He he needs like like. And I don't think Mike Conley is the type of point guard he needs. I think he needs a scoring point guard. Yeah. If you put him with a scoring point guard, then it elevates his game because the point guard can get more buckets. Mike mm-hmm. Conley is more of a facilitator. So yeah, he got to throw it to uh to um Mitchell, and he just puts too much pressure on him. I don't. He's not a person who got to catch the ball and dominate. He need to catch and shoot. Or be catching mm-hmm. going straight to the bucket, but when he got to stand there and think, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he can dribble sometimes and hit a step back. But look, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's twelve seconds that you can wait on the shot clock. You know what I'm saying? So for mm-hmm. for game flow and for for everybody offensively, they need a better point guard. Mm-hmm. But man, I uh, like I said, Denver. Uh, I can see Phoenix getting up there again. Mm-hmm. I, I can't really put much faith in the Lakers. You know, just like I said, mm-hmm. they just they don't look good right now. And, I, and yeah. I know every time you know it's a new team and it's early, and I know they're gonna go on a run to where they're gonna win. 12 mm-hmm. out of 15. Yeah. Like, oh, the Lakers is looking good now. And mm-hmm. I, I get that. But from a playoff perspective, either Westbrook has to be on the bench or just it doesn't make sense because LeBron mm-hmm. needs the ball in his hand. And yeah. if you're telling me Lakers in the finals, game mm-hmm. seven, LeBron mm-hmm. running point, Russell Westbrook on the wing to hit the three pointer, I'm going to laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> like, he ain't trying to So, right, right. And that's that's the thing is. Rondo's not Kyrie. Westbrook isn't Kyrie. So that's why I said that Mike James would have been valuable. But mm. LeBron dominates the ball too much to have two point guards that can't shoot open shots, mm. let alone contested shots. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I, I don't – man, I don't see him in the standing tall in the playoffs, though. That's what I'm saying. You see him – yeah. that Danny Green choked up in the playoffs. J.R. Smith choked up in the playoffs. Not so sure. I'm yeah. supposed to look at mm. – right, playoffs <laughs> is a different beast. And yeah. LeBron had been around too many people who had folded under pressure. That's why Kyrie was such a clutch uh, asset because he mm-hmm. didn't fold. Even Matthew Dellavedova didn't play as great as he did under pressure when yeah. he got real. Mm-hmm. So LeBron needs – and while Rondo can play great under pressure, once again, mm-hmm. do I want Rondo on the wings when LeBron drive in? He got to kick it out. It's like, oh, Rondo for the three. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> So that's all I'm saying. Just from a from a a, a basketball standpoint, unless they're going to have both of their point guards on the bench, mm-hmm. why did you put that put that roster together? I just I can't understand it. And maybe you can play out some kind of way, mm-hmm. but Bron- I can see LeBron, uh, Malik Monk, Melo mm-hmm. out there as some shooters. You know, get AD mm-hmm. and and uh, Dwight Howard as the athletic big man. But once again, that's no point guard. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you could have gave those roster spot of Westbrook to somebody. You get what I'm saying? I just I don't see. Mm-hmm. Westbrook being a valuable asset to the team in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and I don't see them putting Westbrook on the bench. That's why I can't put them in the finals. That's mm-hmm. the only reason why I can't trust them is because lineup wise, it don't make sense when you get down to the last five minutes of the game. Mm-hmm. That, that makes sense though. Yeah, I, I see what you mean though, because Westbrook he he's more of a like a slasher. He's not going to get knocked down threes, but like. He, I mean, I see videos of him working on his form over the summer, but I don't know what's, what happened. Man, that's a lot different than Game 7 with <laughs> yeah, two game seconds seven, left. <laughs> yeah, Game 7 is completely different from you being in the open gym, taking your time. Yeah. Bro, I can go outside right now and, and hit 10 shots in a row, but in a game, yeah. <laughs> I think I, I had a game on Tuesday, and I was 0 for 5. It's, mm-hmm. just, it's, exactly. it's a different type of animal when them hands is coming at you. That's, how, that's all it is. And that's true. I, I'm not in, in the arena I'm playing in. I just got my kids screaming. You know, they got – they could be on the road with 20,000 people saying they, they screaming at you, you know. And then you got to realize mm-hmm. the TV aspect to where there's 12.5 million people watching. So the players know that. Mm-hmm. That's what made somebody like a Kobe so dope is because he had, like, no conscience. Mm-hmm. And I think these new players, the LeBron, the Westbrooks, the players who care about how they dress and stuff mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. they have a real conscience of, damn, if I missed this shot, bro, Twitter don't like my ass up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and that, I think that plays a role in a game. Mm-hmm. Versus I don't see that in a player like LaMelo. Or Lonzo. Mm-hmm. I see them play with pure confidence. Once again, mm-hmm. I go back to the daddy aspect, though. I think they daddy put that in. Yeah, definitely. I mean. Yeah. Even Kyrie. Kyrie plays with pure confidence. But a, a mm-hmm. Kevin Durant, a LeBron James, those mm-hmm. players, you see a lack of confidence in yeah. themselves 
or if they have a bad moment. Mm-hmm. James Harden too. Yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. that's that's that that father aspect, man. You ain't ever been taught that you was God, that you was great. Your mm-hmm. daddy tell you, get up, boy, dust yourself off and try again. Yeah, you know, you can't mm-hmm. cry with you, but you get, like, you watch KD lose the game and he lay his head on mama's chest. It's okay, baby. Yeah. It just mm-hmm. you get a different type of love from mama and daddy, and mm-hmm. I know that because when I was a kid and you know, I did something, mama gave me a hug. But daddy looked at me like, boy, you all right, yeah, get up. Bro, get, get your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. Like, yeah. And so when you raise with that dynamic, you see it, and you just see it play out in our professional athletes. They they regular humans, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think, like, the Tom Brady, the Brett Favre, when mm-hmm. they go, even Patrick Mahomes, anybody who's had a daddy right there the whole time, mm-hmm. look how far they go as an athlete, you know. Even mm-hmm. Devin Booker, um, Jamal Murray. Yep. There's, mm-hmm. there's players who slowly separate, and then when you find out about their stories, Hey, daddy was kicking ass the whole time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that, I think that's the dynamic that why certain players can handle that pressure mm-hmm. and why certain players can't is because they ain't ever had that 100% confidence put in them. And, you know, and, and I'm not saying like LeBron had great coaches, mm-hmm. but it's a different having a coach and knowing your, your daddy loves you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that's a, not your stepdaddy, not some man that married your mama, but the man that you come from <laughs> mm-hmm. to know that that man loves you. Mm-hmm. And really cares about you and wants you to succeed. It gives you a different type of confidence because, bro, I feel like I'm bulletproof simply yeah. because my daddy. Now I don't mm-hmm. give a damn what the world think about me. Mm-hmm. My daddy every day tell me I'm great. So why would I not listen to him? You know what I mean? That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally get that. I totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah, because you see the type of stuff I comment, bro. I'm like, I'm just mm-hmm. not arrogant, but I'm real comfortable with saying stuff that's different because mm-hmm. I ain't got to. I ain't got to please nobody but my father. And you if my father that. is proud of me, why do I care what your opinion is? You didn't raise me. You didn't feed me. You didn't exactly. do that for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, this man was, was the one who, like, when I was struggling, when I was crying everything, he was the one who was yeah. picking me up. What was y'all doing? Right. That's me. <laughs> yeah. So, so it gives you a I different type of – so. Yeah. So my, my whole my whole MO or the way I move around, like, I'm just representing my father. I'm honoring my father. and I, I can't be less of a man than he raised me to be type stuff. And a lot of people will see that as arrogance. But people who grew up with those fathers, like, damn, I get that. Because my, my daddy wouldn't let me be soft either. And that's yeah. that's true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That's definitely true. So the final question I got for you, who's the MVP of this season if you had to choose? I want to – man, I'm, I'm different because, you know, the Bulls is up really high in the standings. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of want to look that way. I, I like mm-hmm. LaMelo a lot because he's a young guy. Mm-hmm. But the MVP is always kind of based around, you know, the top top, top seeds. Teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think Miami's got the best team right now, I think. Yeah, so um, Giannis could, could potentially get another. I, I would like to see, like, a play like an underdog, like a Jimmy Butler yeah. or something, just because I think his acceptance speech would be, like, raw. You yeah. know what I mean? Just because what he done went through in life, he's not a, mm-hmm. he's not a real um, media puppet. You know, he wouldn't hold back on what he said and how he feels. So mm-hmm. I like players like him. Mm-hmm. Um, I say I'm a big I'm a big Denver fan. I, I think Jamal Murray is still out. Yeah, he's still uh, out. I'm not sure if he's coming back this season. Yeah, Michael Porter Jr. is nice though. So the the MVP is it's like a it's not a real award anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my my preseason pick, if you would have said, I would have said Kyrie Irving because I just see him. I just see him walking through the NBA. I watched him work out all all summer. And I was like, he about to he about to go off. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the Lakers if the Lakers shape out, I honestly could see LeBron getting it. If you know, mm-hmm. and they don't, and I'm not even saying shape out like they gotta finish number one, mm-hmm. but let them let them finish top four. Yeah, with the with the roster they got with with Melo and AD and Westbrook and LeBron James was able to roll all these veteran players together yeah. and mm-hmm. still average. You know how to eat. You know yeah. how to hype them up, bro. Yeah, they, they can wait to put like a story behind you and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. behind the scenes of how LeBron James got Russell Westbrook <laughs> and Rondo to be teammates. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So yeah, Obviously, I can see yeah. it going to him. Yeah, yeah. That's because LeBron makes money. Um, that's mm-hmm. the biggest difference to the of Jordan and LeBron is mm-hmm. Jordan was a ball player, mm-hmm. and I don't really think Jordan ever gave the image that he cared about money. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm wrong, but I never seen him. He never seemed like he cared about Space Jam that much. Yeah, or he, he cared about his retros coming back out. Mm-hmm. Even when he switched to Washington, he just he wanted to hoop and he wanted he was pissed off at Rip Hamilton when they went winning games. You know what I'm yep. saying? He just never seemed so like a, because of where he's Jordan. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Versus LeBron, like LeBron just doesn't seem like he cares about basketball as much as he cares about like making money. And I don't knock that because that's your mo. That's your mo. Yeah. But as a fan of the game, I thought it was dope that Kobe wanted to kill you. Yeah. 
Yeah. He didn't want to shake your hand versus LeBron want to be everybody's friend. He want to be everybody's buddy. He want to send you a gift for Christmas. Yeah. I, that's weakness to me. Because you know and I know a competition, bro. Let's say right now if we playing Madden. Yeah. We might start off cool, but let it get a little heated. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's just normal as, as how we are as men. Not that, yeah. you know, that's just – so the fact that LeBron is just so buddy-buddy with everybody, it's like, bro, that's yeah. not real. Because yeah. if you beat me too many times at Madden, I'm putting the controller down for a minute. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like for sure. If we outside playing 21, like, it may get a little physical if you got 19. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but with LeBron, it's like it's no it's no competition because mm -hmm. in case you beat me, I want you to like me. Mm -hmm. You know, but when remember when uh when he when they was up on Golden State, he was willing to flex all over Steph and stuff when he blocked his shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Le LeBron is a real front runner. Um, mm -hmm. and but I think the media loves that about him. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see that in Kobe or Jordan. They wanted to kill you whether they was ahead or behind. Mm -hmm. They was they was gonna kill you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And if LeBron had that he would have won 10 to 12 MVPs because the yeah. MVPs that he won were, were, were granted. But I don't, I feel like LeBron, when he was in Cleveland the first time, that's mm -hmm. when he loved basketball. Mm -hmm. When remember when he was getting to the Eastern Conference Finals and playing Detroit and scoring 25 a game and all that? Yep. Mm -hmm. He loved basketball. Um, mm -hmm. And in Miami, I think losing that first finals changed him. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think if they win that finals, he's he, he still, I'm the basketball guy. Mm -hmm. But I think he made that big old spectacle. He went to Miami and they lost. And I think that was embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And he's doing whatever he can to avoid that level of embarrassment again. And that's why he wants to befriend Steph Curry and Dame Lillard and Kevin Durant mm -hmm. and Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi yeah. Leonard don't like him at all. But he exactly. wants to be Kawhi's best friend so bad. Mm -hmm. You know how you like uh, – you know how uh, it's that kid who always want to shake your hand. You're like, man, get away from me. Like that yeah. kid every morning who just walk up and speak to you. Like, I don't even know you, bro. That's how LeBron acted towards Kyrie. I mean, to mm -hmm. to Kawhi. Kawhi. He talks. He wanted. That's why Kawhi just the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to be Kawhi's best friend so bad. Mm -hmm. Like he, but he, he don't want that competition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so oh. that's what I see about LeBron. He just he doesn't want competition, and I can't. I can't get with that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like mm -hmm. competition is okay. Like it, it's so it's totally fine that me and you got to go against each other, mm -hmm. and you beat me. No, mm -hmm. I'm not your friend during this. After, after that, we can talk. But LeBron want to be your friend the whole time. Yeah. Hey, good shot, bro. Damn, I can't <laughs> believe you missed that. Like, chill, mm -hmm. guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember that, bro. Like, we in the middle yeah. of the game. Like, mm -hmm. but, and that just shows his lack of confidence that uh, he knows in the back of his head that he could lose. He don't go into every situation like a Kobe. Like, there's no way I could lose. Mm -hmm. You know? Or at least I'm going to kill you. Like, I'm going to die trying. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't have that. It's not a I'm going to kill you or die. I'm going to win or die trying. It's a... We can be friends afterwards, right? Okay, cool. We'll have our plan. All right. Long, yeah. long as I still get to be on the good side. You want to be on the good side no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I totally get that. I totally get yeah. that. <laughs> but I appreciate you being on, bro. Oh, no Let problem, my guy. Let me know your perspective on the season so far and everything. And good luck to your kids with all their, their games and everything, their season. Man, and for, you, and for you, be, <laughs> and for you, you know, just having your kids with you now, it's a new step. Oh, man, it's, it's dope. All, all six of them, I got one on the way. I got nice, like congratulations. Seven. And that's the thing, man. Like, people say, uh, being a parent is stressful. Hey, yeah, I, I, I promise you, it's a did go dance party in my house. I'm not ever stressed. I mean, you see me, bro, I ain't ever mad. Yeah. I'm always smiling. I'm always exactly. Upbeat. You know, a household is only as strong as that man, and mm -hmm. It's my job to show my children that you can be anything, that you can accomplish anything, and mm -hmm. you know, ha happiness is an inside job. So I gotta, I got, I gotta portray that. You know, yeah. You, you gotta really, you know, you can only say, uh, you can only show people so much by your words, but you gotta show them by action. And actions yeah. are ten times more powerful. So mm -hmm. I just, I, I try to be the greatest leader and the greatest role model. You know, somebody's always watching. Yep, because the kids are definitely watching you and everything. Like, that's, like you're the first person they're going to like see in the morning at the end of the night. That's real life. See, so. Yeah, fathers are dummy important. So I just I – mean, and not even just for my kids, you know. I, I think this is for every man, and a lot of us don't look at life this way. But you know, every time you walk out the house, you're a role model for every little boy, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. You don't know how many kids don't have a daddy. You don't know how many kids get abused. You don't know how many kids are in stressful situations. Mm -hmm. And they can see you out and the way you carry yourself and the way you talk or the way you dress or any of that. Mm -hmm. That could be inspiring or uplifting. So, I, I, like I said, I try to keep a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. I try to carry myself in the right way because – I don't know what a lot of people are going through, but their life has to be a lot more stressful than mine or they'd be just as happy as I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> but all right, man. It was, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, we're going to have to do this again. And for whenever sure. you need me back, we probably do like a mid-season, all-star breakers. 
Let's get some do games it. under my belt. Yeah. See what's going on. <laughs> then I can give you better predictions on MVP and all that stuff. Yeah, let's do it then. That's the plan. <laughs> all right, my man. Enjoy your evening. You too, bro. Yeah. <laughs>